Hi guys, so as we know, Boris Johnson's Brexit deal passed through both Houses of Parliament. It was signed into law. But I want to show you this very powerful speech by Theresa May, former Prime Minister Theresa May. Now, it seems on the surface to be an almost perfect speech. There's a single flaw in it. But actually, if we look at, from, look at it from a different angle, it is a perfect speech. And I'll explain that in a moment. Theresa May. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I welcome this deal and I will be supporting it today. And I welcome the fact that the official opposition will be supporting this deal. But I did listen with some incredulity to what the leader of the opposition said. He said he wanted a better deal. He had the opportunity in early 2019, when there was the opportunity of a better deal on the table, and he voted against it. So I will take... No. <laughs> um, so this sounds like it's directed at Keir Starmer. And she, she points it out, you know, Keir Starmer had an opportunity to vote for a better deal, and he voted against a, a, a better deal. You know who Keir, Look at who Keir Starmer is pointing at. He's pointing at Boris Johnson because Boris Johnson voted against Theresa May's deal as well. So I think what Theresa May is doing here is she's smuggling in a critique of Boris Johnson um, under the guise of cri uh, criticizing the official opposition. Look at Boris. I would like to see Boris Johnson's face here um, because obviously this is a critique of Boris Johnson. This is not really her criticizing Keir Starmer. She's insult she's attacking Keir Starmer, but in reality she's attacking Boris Johnson. Um this is or maybe I'm mis misunderstanding the speech, but I think that's what she's doing. Take no lectures from the leader of the opposition on this deal. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, central to this deal, the Prime Minister has said, is the tariff-free and quota-free trade arrangements, subject, of course, to rules of origin requirements. It would have been unforgivable for the European Union not to have allowed tariff-free and quota-free access, given that they signed up to that in the political declaration signed with my government in November 2018. <laughs> so, so what did Boris Johnson actually win? If the European Union had agreed to it in the political declaration, then what advantage did Boris Johnson get? So she, I think what she's doing here is she's building up a criticism of Boris Johnson and his deal. I think it was clever to attack Keir Starmer, but in reality it's an attack on Boris Johnson. One of the reasons for supporting this deal is the security arrangements that have been put in place, which are very important. Access to PNR and PROM are important. There's an issue of the timeliness of access to that, those and the uh, other databases like ECRIS. I hope in operational uh, terms, in practice, we will see little change to uh, the ability to investigate as a result of the good relationships that have been built up. But I do say that I think the EU has made a mistake in not allowing us access to CIS2. I understand that was a principle that they set, that we could not have that access, but I think that that is something that we should aim to try to find some resolution of that in the future. Because it Isn't it interesting you have a dignified politician? Look, I've been critical of Theresa May in the past, but comparing her to Boris Johnson, you're comparing chalk and cheese here. She's a much better politician. She's much more honest. Um, a much better leader, much better prime minister. And I think if she had been in charge, if uh, she hadn't been removed by the ERG and Boris Johnson, I think the UK would have gotten a better deal. It is an important database. It does uh, help us in our fight against modern slavery, child abduction, uh, and uh, identifying criminals across, the, uh, across our borders. I think she represents the old guard. The new guard is the populists, the ones who just want to provide simple, simplistic answers to complex problems. One area where I am disappointed in the deal is in services. Uh, it is no longer the case that UK service providers will have the automatic right of access to provide services across the EU. They will have to abide by the individual rules of a state. I understand if you're a lawyer advising on UK law, in the Czech Republic you will have to be resident, in Austria you will have not to be resident, just as an example of the difference of those rules. 
and the key area is financial services. In 2018, in Mansion House, I said that we wanted to work to get a financial services deal in the future arrangement, treaty arrangement, and that that would be truly groundbreaking. It would have been, but sadly, it has not been achieved. We have sadly, <laughs> it's complete lack of leadership that it was not achieved. It's complete indifference to the UK economy that it was not achieved. Boris Johnson instead fo focused on pointless issues such as fishing instead of focusing on financial services. But it was about the populist message. It was about appearing um, appearing strong in, in, uh, for the public. It's for it was more for public consumption. The public don't care about financial services or services in general. They're more turned on by issues like fishing or money or borders or things like that. Have a deal in trade, which benefits the EU, but not a deal in services, which would have benefited the UK. And you can see Boris Johnson shaking his head here, but she's right. If I was, if I was a UK citizen, I'd be very angry because this, this deal doesn't include services and a huge amount of um, money for the exchequer comes through services. Rishi Sunak is sitting there. He knows this. He knows that the, uh, the economy is made up of 80% services. Now, not all of those services are exchanged with the EU, but it's a very vital, it's a vital part of the UK economy. And once again, Theresa May is highlighting the obvious. The deal, the arrangement treaty is clear that future negotiation on these points are, is possible. And I hope that the government will go to that negotiation with alacrity and vigour, particularly on financial services. Of course, there is a whole structure set up uh, under this uh, treaty. Uh, we, one thing this treaty does not do is excise the EU from our lives, because there's a whole structure of committees set up some of which, like the Partnership Council, will be able to amend this arrangement, make determinations on its operation and interpretation, without, as far as I can see, any formal reference to this Parliament. Now, sovereignty has been uh, underpinned the negotiations since Article 50 was triggered. Sovereign Finally, somebody says it. At least someone in Parliament is saying it. The sovereignty was not something to be taken back. Sovereignty already existed. Where was Theresa May <laughs> over the last six months? Sovereignty does not mean isolationism. It does not mean we never accept somebody else's rules. It does not mean exceptionalism. Uh, and it is important as we go forward that we recognise we live in an interconnected world. And if the United Kingdom is going to play the role that I believe it should play in not just upholding, but encouraging and promoting the rules-based international order, and in ensuring that we promote the interests and value and strengthen multilateral institutions like the World Trade Organization, we must never allow ourselves to think, as I fear some in this house do, that sovereignty means isolationism. So this is a, a rebuke to the populism of Boris Johnson, the populism of the, the modern Conservative Party. Um, as I said before, Theresa May represents the old party. I, I, unfortunately, I think that is going out of fashion. Um, Boris Johnson is fully in charge now. He's going to be empowered by this Brexit deal. The only thing that would undermine Boris Johnson would be the disaster of Brexit. But I'm pretty sure that they have a full list of candidates to blame for any disaster. You know, they will start off blaming the EU. They'll start off blaming Remainers for not supporting the, the government. Remember, the government will not take responsibility for anything that goes wrong with Brexit. In the same way that Boris Johnson has t not taken responsibility for anything that has gone wrong with the pandemic response. It's always somebody else's fault. It's the public's fault. It's the, um, it's, uh, the EU's fault. It's uh, uh, Remainer's fault. It's the judge's fault. It's the uh, how, uh, immigrant's fault. It's, it's everyone else's fault. The government will never take responsibility for any mistake. And I hope that the public will wake up to this and they will eventually throw Boris Johnson and his populist gang out and 
you know, I'm no fan of the Conservative Party, but I would much prefer someone like Theresa May, someone pragmatic at least, as Theresa May in the, par in the party, ru running the party. But I say to all members across this House, today is the time, as I have said before, to put aside personal and party political interests, which sadly too many have followed in the past. Vote in the national interest for the whole UK and support this bill. Well, it went through anyway, whether um, it was in the party interest, in the country's interest, in whoever's interest, it went through anyway. Um, Keir Starmer came out and supported it. It went through without much uh, opposition. At the end of the day, we have to wait and see. We're going to see the results of this. And I think it's important that the public, the general public, put pressure on Boris Johnson when things go badly. I hope that Keir Starmer is going to be able to respond to, to Boris Johnson uh, when things go badly. Because if he's not capable of doing that, then Boris Johnson is going to get away with it. And I'm afraid that Johnson's response to any criticism from Keir Starmer will be, well, you voted for it anyway. Why are you criticizing the deal? It's very important that Keir Starmer criticizes the implementation of the deal. He criticizes Brexit itself, saying, look, Brexit is not working. Whether people voted for it or not, it's not working. It's a disaster. We need to fix this. That's what he needs to, that's the way he needs to attack Boris Johnson. Let me know in the comment section, guys, what you thought about this speech. As always, your comments are greatly appreciated. Thanks a lot. I want to say a big, big thank you to all of my patrons. You ensure that this channel continues to exist. I'm eternally grateful for all of your support. If you join Patreon, you will receive instant access to our Discord server, where we have both audio and video chats. You can chat with me and other patrons where we discuss important and non-important issues. Becoming a patron per month costs about the same as a large coffee. So why not check it out?